Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skoldi and today we are going to add an explosion when the cannonball hits an object, assuming of course you have the boolean for it to explode on impact. We're also going to add a sound effect when it explodes, and we're going to animate the enemy when it gets hit and when it dies. Let's begin by going into a cannonball and implementing the explosion itself, because currently if you shoot it just gonna disappear. It does apply damage on it, so it's gonna die on this hit. We also have a delay, so if the ball were to bounce on it, it shouldn't immediately apply twice the damage. So let's open up the cannonball scene. Let's open the script. Let's scroll down. So before we actually use Q3, we're going to do some work. So I'm just gonna remove Q3 for now, and I'm going to create a particle 2D. So just right-click the cannonball, select Add Child Node, search for Particle, and select Particles 2D. Now I'm gonna rename this to Explosion Particles. And then, let's zoom in a bit so we have an idea of how it would look like when it actually plays. Now we don't want it to play continuously like it does right now, but for now I'm just gonna leave it on that way so we can actually see how the changes affect it. So I'm gonna start by increasing the amount a little bit, let's try 60 or so. Now the lifetime won't be long, we only want it to be there for a moment and then disappear. So I'm gonna use uh, 0.5 should be enough, actually let's increase it to 0.7. Let's scroll down a bit, let's make it more explosive here, let's see. Explosiveness, let's reduce that a little bit. Now, as you can see, the lower value, the more it comes out in bursts, and we want a burst of explosion. Yeah, 0.1 is fine. Let's go down a bit. Now for spread, we're gonna use 180. And now it is starting to look like something. Let's increase the line of velocity a little bit. It's a bit too slow. Let's try 500. Ah, there we go. That's better. Initial size. Let's make sure it's a little less than usual. So 0.5, so it'll kind of increase. Now this won't be a realistic explosion, more of a kind of old school game explosion. Well, I said that, but let's load a texture on it. Let's just select the cannonball. <laughs> so when the huge cannonball explodes, it's gonna create a lot of smaller cannonballs. So I'm gonna reduce the amount a little bit, because it's a bit too much here. Let's just make it like a... Yeah, that's better. Now the lifetime might be a bit too long, let's try 0.5. Yeah, now we're talking here. But we don't want it to loop, so I'm gonna turn off emitting. I'm gonna set emit timeout to 0 0.1 second. Let's try it on. Perfect. So when we start emitting, it's gonna happen only once before it turns itself off. And that's what we want. So we're also going to need a timer now. So I'm gonna right click the cannonball, select timer, and add that. And this is going to be our death delay timer for our cannonball. Because when we hit something, we're gonna turn off the sprite, we're gonna turn off collision, and we're gonna stop processing, as we already have done in the script behind there. But we're also going to enable a timer, and that will be our death delay timer. One second is fine, and we want it to be one shot. So let's go back into our cannonball script here. So when it explodes, we want to emit from our collision particles. So on the top here, I'm gonna get those nodes. So let's create the two nodes right here. So on ready, var explosion particles equals get node explosion particles. I'm gonna copy this, paste it below, I'm gonna rename it to death delay. Copy that, paste it there, and add timer. Actually, let's just use the full name. Okay, for now I'm gonna copy the explosion particles reference and go all the way down here. So, paste it in there, and set emitting to true. Let us hide this sprite, and let's get the reference to the sprite node. On ready, var sprite equals get node sprite. Now you could argue that we could just directly use get node, and that is com that, that would be completely fine in this case, because we're only gonna run this once anyway. But for the sake of consistency, so since I'm already getting the explosion particles this way, I might as well get the sprite as well. So let's add it there, and let us hide it. And then we're gonna do the same for collision, so we're gonna disable collision by enabling the trigger. So let's go all the way up again, <laughs> let's get the reference to the collision shape 2D. So on ready, var collision equals get node collision. There we go. Let's copy that, let's go all the way down again. Let's paste it in and let us just simply set trigger to true. 
it also allow anything that may have a collided with this to just go straight through. Now, it's kind of a hack, and it's not really... I would argue and s claim that this isn't really a proper way of doing it, but it's a functional way of doing it. Unless you f need to use the trigger on this cannibal, but I know we don't, so this is a fine way of doing it. Otherwise, you will have to find a different way of just removing the collision. And you could, of course, just queue free the collision itself, and that would be fine as well. So, let us begin the death delay. In fact, let's start the death delay timer. So, death delay timer dot start. But we will need to set up connection with the timer itself. And the reason we're using a timer is because we want to disable the cannibal for a certain amount of time before actually removing it from memory using Q3. So let's go to ready here, and if it's not made, we will have to create it. So let's create our, our ready function here. Ready, death delay timer, connect, and we want to connect with timeout. And we want it to signal ourselves on a node called on death delay timeout. Copy this, let's go all the way down again. And let's create another function called exactly that. So we have a function on death delay timeout. And in here, we are going to queue free. So this is the final run that terminates the entire cannonball. So let's take a quick look and see if we haven't forgotten anything. Now we have set up the particles that we play, it's gonna turn itself on. It's gonna hide the sprite, it's gonna turn off the collision so nothing else can interact with it. And once the death delay has run its course, it's going to destroy the entire node. So now this should be done. What remains is to create this sound effect. So let's just first test it to make sure it actually plays a particle effect there, and it does. Cool. So we have a new sound effect called Explosion Short. So I'm gonna add that into our project. So I'm gonna put that into Entities, Cannon, Cannonball, and Assets. So I'm gonna just paste it in right there. We are going to make this play a sound effect. And the way we're gonna do it, we're gonna right click Cannon, Add Child Node, and we're gonna find a Sample Player. Now, if you want the explosion to be relative to the ball itself, you would choose the sample player 2D. However, if you wanted the audio to play globally, so regardless of where your camera is at, you, you will hear it clear as day, you would choose the sample player. But, because I want the explosion to seem locally, I'm gonna select the sample player 2D. I'm gonna rename this to sample player 2D. No need a more name. And then, on the right side here, we're gonna create a sample using a new sample library. So I'm gonna select new sample library, I'm gonna select it again and select edit. And then I'm going to add the audio file in here. And here I'm just gonna drag in the explosion short file. Let's play it to make sure it works. Perfect. Now it may be too loud, it may be too low, and you can adjust it by increasing or decreasing the decibel level. Now there's one thing you should keep in mind. If you're using a sound effect sample player 2D and you wanted to play multiple sound effects at once, you should increase this value. Currently, it will only allow one audio to play at a time, so if you were to increase it to 10, you can play 10 audio samples at once. Just something to keep in mind, but because of the way we set this up, this is only gonna run once, so this is fine. I'm now going to enter a script here, and I'm gonna get a reference to the sample player 2D. So on the bottom here, I'm gonna get sample player 2D. On ready var sample player equals get node sample player 2D. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna go all the way down here, and let's take a look, where do we want this to play? So we want it to play right here. So let's just play sound effect. Sample player dot play and the name of that sample. And as you remember, it is explosion underscore short. So let's test it out. Perfect. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Haha, <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. So we are now completely done with the cannonball. Now, if you want to further improve our cannonball, you can also add sound effects for when it bounces, in which case, you may want to increase this value if that is the case. What we're now going to do is we're going to set up the animations on our enemy. So I'm just going to open it, open an editor, and right-click the enemy, add child node, and select a animation player. I'm going to rename this to anim underscore player. And in here, we're going to create two animations. The first one is going to be on hit. This is going to run when the ball simply hits this player, this enemy. The second one is going to be on death, and this is going to be an animation that will heh, play on his death. So let's go start with on hit. Let us begin by selecting this sprite, because all I'm going to do, I'm only going to modify this sprite itself. So I'm not going to change the collision shape or anything like that, because this is all cosmetics, it doesn't actually change anything in terms of gameplay. So. 
let's just start by pressing the key here on the scale and select create and this will create a key for our transform scale so let's drag this to the right a little bit and let's adjust the scale of our sprite i'm just going to select q to select select mode then i'm going to hold left alt and i'm going to drag this little ar around i'm going to make it wibble, wobble a little bit when it get hit so it's going to go like kind of like this then i'm going to select the scale key again to make sure it's set down there so now if i were to go back and forward you kind of see animation between them i'm going to create one more like so i'm going to press scale and the last one i'm simply going to move it a bit to the right i'm going to right click the first key i'm going to select duplicate selection there we go so let's take a look here begins and it ends the same way it began so if i were to play now it kind of reacts good but it's a bit too slow in my opinion so let's increase the speed a little bit by, put the, by putting them closer together. Let's reduce the length to 0 0.7. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I can live with that. Okay, so we have our on-hit animation ready and done. So let's go to our on-death animation. Well, when it dies, let's make it a bit silly. Let's make him spin around like, like you know, um, cartoon character or something. I don't know. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm also going to add a key for scale, but also rotation. Just select the key on any properties you want to edit during the animation, and that's how basically how the entire animation plane works. So we now have our starting frame. This is where we will begin. Now I'm going to go to the right a little bit, and now I'm going to do some crazy stuff. I'm going to press E in order to turn on a rotation mode, or you can simply press this little icon here. Then I'm going to rotate it. Then I'm going to press Q to change it to select mode and then hold left alt and stretch this a little bit to make it a bit crazy looking let's see uh, like so let's add the key on both the rotation and scale let's continue with this do the same press E to rotate pressing Q to change back to scale mode or select mode allowing you to scale holding left alt and stretching it a little bit crazier Let's select a key on scale and rotation once again. And one last time. And this is basically the part where he will kind of disappear in thin air. So I'm going to press E again, rotate one last time, pressing Q. And I'm going to scale this all the way down to zero. So on the scale here, I'm just going to manually type in zero on the X axis. Which will make it turn into nothing. So if I now were to add a key here and a rotational key, let's take a look and see what it looks like. So I'm going to play this. Wow, that's kind of weird. But let us increase the speed a little bit. Let's reduce the length to 0 0.7. Yeah, 0 0.7, that works. Let's do it again. Perfect. It looks really, really weird. But you know what? Weird works. So, pressing Ctrl S to make sure everything is saved. We now have finished our animation player. We now have to run the animation player from within the script here. So let's make sure we can reference the animation player by getting it. So, let's get the anim player on the ready var anim player equals get node and there we're gonna want the anim underscore player i'm gonna copy this i'm gonna go down and let's see here when we are hit we want to play the hit animation but if we die as we hit we don't want to run the hit animation we want to play the death animation so here if our health is less or equal than zero, we're gonna play the animation. We are not going to immediately Q freeze. I'm gonna get rid of that. So we're simply gonna play death animation. So any player dot play. And here we have on death. And that's that. But in order to terminate this enemy when it this it stops playing, we need to create another connection. So on anim player, we're gonna connect this with finished on ourself and the method name or the function name we're gonna create will be on death finished so i'm gonna copy that i'm gonna go all the way down i'm gonna create a function called on death finished and in here we're gonna queue free when this will run depends on the length of this animation so if you want to wait longer before you queue free you can just increase the, the time on our death animation but this is just perfect so let's create that Let's copy this and let's make sure this plays if we don't die. So if we take damage, we are going to play on hit. 
it is completely fine to create a connection in here because we only want this to run once anyway. However, if this runs and this is done beforehand, we are going to queue free when this is done running. So we don't want that. So this is done directly after we uh, have died. It's just something to keep in mind in case you were thinking that you can add this inside ready. Okay, so let's try it out. If everything went well, when you hit the player, he should shake a little bit on the first time. And it works. If everything works correctly now, he should die. Nice. So thank you so much for watching this. Please comment below and tell me what you think. If you have ideas for improvement, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Bye-bye.